Hi, uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, show you how far we've come with the airlift pump stuff. And I think we're uh, ready to uh, start to understand stuff. So this is the little rig I used for testing airlift pumps. Uh, so I used this little uh, aquarium air pump to pump uh, air down into the bottom of the barrel where the air comes up these little tubes all the way up in here and then it comes out and you measure the flow here or here there's another one down here so you measure the flow in those three places and um, then you calculate you know what's the best uh, tube size for doing the work this is part of a formula for calculating um, the uh, efficiency and the performances of airlift pumps under different conditions so this is only part of the formula. So this is the reason the, the numbers aren't out there ready for you to go. The numbers are hard to um, calculate. And um, no one has actually done what I'm doing here. No one has measured out the numbers for uh, low pressure airlift pumps. So this is my uh, pump. So it's a Marina 200. It is... Uh, 4.5 PS, uh, 4.5 watts, and it's 2.55 psi, and 2.55 psi. One psi is uh, enough. Uh, uh, what is it? It pumps uh, uh, air 700 um, millimeters roughly down in water, about twi uh, 26 inches deep in in water, 26, 27 inches, and um, anyway. This is my testing, my testing going for uh, airlift pump um, designs. So it's quite a lot of water. So I am testing uh, currently quarter inch tubing for lift versus. Uh, just go through this quickly and see where we're at. Oh, it gets stuck up in new tubing. It does not occur in the old. Oh, don't mind. This is changing the um, and there does seem to be a difference between one side and the other side of the, uh, the pump because it's an old pump. Um, let's see where we are now. <laughs> now it's either going to have a stick and it's going to be an horizon in order to find out how different submergence affect. So this is the system I'm using. Uh, so this is the taking the out of the water. Uh, constrictions in here so it just means it's going to a smaller tube. In here, air comes in through the black, and that's pipes. Uh, really the thing that makes this airlift pump. I've got the three different pipe sizes I'm testing. I've got dye in the water so that we can see. Here's the one foot airlift measure, and up here, I just put little holes in, made little tiny funnels from plastic up here. And I don't know if it'll work, it might work. It worked for the, the, the test and uh, just the height. There's quite a bit to be done. Okay, what's this next one? Oh, so yeah, this next one is the um, the the little pump uh, set up t for both sides to to deliver air. So there's three different ways of doing it. You can have one side deliver air, uh, deliver air, the other side. And one is more damaged than the other, so uh, they give different amounts of air. One side, both sides, or the other side. And I have three eighths tubing, um, a quarter, and um, uh, what is it? Uh, five sixteenths as the up pipes. So these are the these send the air down to the bottom, and then they go up another pipe. And I think. I have to get out of this by uh, this and then I'm going to open this guy here make this small okay so I got all these figures it took almost two days to get these figures for um, the airlift pumping so it took a long time and the height I was pumping the air up was 2.34 meters so as 7.6 feet and the lift to submergence depended on 
how deep down in the barrel I had the water and I'll get to the finger figures now I'm going to just make this full screen view full screen and these are charts of lift to submergence versus liters per hour now the air coming in is 72 liters per hour in this green uh, 160 liters per hour this is the two joined together in this color here at 88 liters per hour in red so one side is the green side is more damaged than the red side and, and neither of them are um, both of them are slightly damaged over maybe a year and a half of use so um, and so uh, 160 liters per hour is the two combined so this uh, thing here is the two combined and um, if you were to add this and this you would get this here and what that means is that in a quarter inch tubing the ideal speeds are in around the 72 to uh, 88 liters per hour of air going through that tubing will uh, give a good performance if you use 160 liters per hour in that tubing you just get a little bit of extra so two tubes are better than one tube in that case two tubes gives this performance here now if you look at these curves this curve is going to come down here and i think i calculated that out already that it hits around the 15 uh, lift to submergence of 15 will be uh, practically zero water being pumped and so this graph if you look at it going up here I'm not sure where it's going to hit but and I don't have enough of it to actually but um, uh, let's see it's, you can only go this is uh, this is a, a like it's lift over submergence vers versus liters per hour so this will go up and up and up but uh, I can't imagine it uh, going much higher than 20 but maybe it does I really don't know and uh, now air at I want to show you something from this so there's 72 liters per hour of air and a lift to submergence of uh, so the air is going down in the water say uh, a certain distance and it's pumping water up in this case at this tree three times as high so what you do to calculate the efficiency is three by this number here uh, three ten so thirty um would be the um the energy that is delivered to the water you know it's three by ten and uh by uh air at uh 72. so that's 30 over se so the efficiency of this in using the air is roughly around 50 percent and um the this the efficiency of this one is um so we call it uh, 11 so 33 say 34 so about 34 on this one yeah uh, 34 34 and a half for 88 so uh this one is not as efficient as this and uh and this is how you work it out um you know it's um 34 over 88 as opposed to um 10 you know 3 tens 30 over 72 and then this one is uh compared to is very inefficient because it's 160 liters per hour of air and three by um say 13 13 26 39 so about 40 for 160 so this is only about 33 percent efficient so that's way worse efficiency 
than these two. So you can measure the efficiency of the pumping, roughly measured uh, with these. Now, uh, 4 by 5, 6, 7, 4, 7 is 28. This is about 30 again for this. So uh, uh, pumping at 4 to 1 lift to submergence is nearly as, it's essentially the same efficiency as, as this 3 to 1. And we can go down to 6, uh, 6 to 1, we'll hit about here at 5, 5, 6 is 30. So even here, going uh, 5 times the height, that uh, it's still around the same efficiency using the air. And we go right down to 9. So this is 9 to 1, so 1 to Two and a half by nine. Nine two is eighteen. Uh, so this is about twenty-two uh, um, over seventy-two. So at the nine, like it's f the efficiency is really starting to fade off here. But in this case, along here, it's, it's not too bad. From three to six is f relatively good efficiency, and this is what the chart is all about: trying to find out, um, you know. If we extend this graph up, you've got to do a little imagination on that, but it might be going up like this. You'll be able to calculate um, how efficient this will be under other conditions, and this will help you uh, design airlift pumps for yourselves. Now this is 8 millimeter tubing, and again we see, we've got the graph here again, and we go up to 3, 3 nines, 27, on the 72 so not quite as efficient there 3 12s 36 so this is more efficient so this one actually um, is better 88 liters per minute oh sorry no it isn't better so uh, 3 12s 36 36 88 so it's, uh, it's still not that wonderful and and then this uh, 160, so uh, your 3 uh, by 16 and a half, so that's uh, 64, 65, something like that. So 65 over 160, you're getting um, something like 30% efficiency here. And then when you combine the two of these, You've got slightly better efficiency. So uh, that means that these two are still more efficient, a little bit more efficient than this. Uh, uh, th 3 by 21. So 21, um, 21 for uh, 20, 40, 63. 63 over 160. So we're still just over the 30% efficiency. And then we come along to this, uh, the 3 8 tubing. Oh yeah, and this one, your lift to submergence will hit the, the zero, no more pumping, at somewhere around 11 or 12, I would think. 11 or 12, there's no more pumping. So that's the maximum lift to submergence ratio. And you need to know this, um, um, for uh, pumping as well. Now this, the maximum lift to submergence, looks like it's just around the 8 mark. On 160 liters per minute on this, m when you're going slower, you're down around, we got to ignore, uh, this is zero here, but it's going to hit zero before that, so we try and angle it down, five and a half with uh, 88 liters per hour and then with uh, 72 we angle it down it's pretty clear at about about five just before five is um, lift to submergence is zero and um, not too wonderful here 160 liters per hour now we look at this, there's maybe there's a mistake in my figures here because the, the curve is nice and straight up here. So this looks like a mistake 
in, on my part in measuring. And we would just bring it up here. And then you see you can you can actually evaluate how far up it goes. You can extend uh, it with, with more chance of error, but um, I, you can guesstimate what your, if you go uh, two to one uh, lift to submergence, where your, your thing will end up. Now the only problem with this is um, the difference between three, three to one and two to one is a lot more water and the pipes do have a limit to wha how much uh, air and water combined they can carry because um, the more water and air the more uh, turbulence so so there is that problem so this as you can see is coming up just not as quickly as this one and this is the combined so this isn't really one that you should trust so much but this one you can see it's coming way up and um, you know 23 is 60 for 160 potentially this might work better with more air so maybe 200 liters per hour would pump very impressively in this one but that's something that we can work out later uh, I, I'm kind of stalled on this experiment now because I don't know what to do next. I don't know if I uh, get a different pump and try more air to find out what this is capable of or if I snip my pipes halfway down and uh, go with lower heights to see um, what happens in that case because the curves, hopefully the curves will be the same but they might be uh, a little bit different and the, the goal here is to help people design air lift pumps for all sorts of different things so i'm just uh, it's winter anyway so uh no one's going to be doing too much of this until the spring probably but this is at least a start where you can work out efficiency you can work out how much water per hour that you're pumping and you can have some idea of how deep you need to go and um, you know what to do in that way anyways I've got to make this small and bring up this guy and hopefully it'll be a nice video <laughs>